Um, I wanted to do like kind of a quick casual video. I saw Hobby Kane came out with their Quantum Nova, which is actually a Cheerson CX-20. Sort of a, another Phantom clone, but um, it's a little bit unique in the fact that it's using a uh, APM style flight controller. So it actually uses Mavlink to connect and um, APM's firmware. So that's kind of exciting because that stuff has a lot of potential. And um, it's not quite as easy to use as things like a NASA. So don't expect like phantom quite quality unless you really know how to tune and utilize APM. But um, let me just give you a couple details about what I found. I just got it today, taking it apart, kind of looking at what they did. So let me uh, turn the camera around. Okay, so here we are. Here's the Quantum Nova or the CX-20, the Cheerson. Um, it is it is one and the same. There are no differences between the two. Hobby King just rebranded it. Um, I like the design so far. It's very, very similar to the Phantom. It's very similar to the the Horizon Blade uh, 350QX. The thing that is truly unique, as I already said, is this flight control board is essentially a dual layer miniaturized version of an APM 2.5. Um, potentially a 2.6. I actually need to crack the case open and see if they have an onboard magnetometer that's just uh, uh, released or not soldered. It, it sort of depends on if it's there or not. But um, it's kind of unique because they design a lot of components specifically for this. You know, these are kind of conventional 2212 motors. They actually look to be almost an exact knockoff of the Phantom motors and about equal quality. Pretty good motors, nothing super special. The balance is probably a little bit off, um, as is usual for most cheaper motors. But um, with good vibration isolation, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, things that are kind of unique about this that I found that were eh, some good, some bad. Um, this is the GPS unit. A lot of people are wondering what it is. It's sort of a cheaper Neo 6M. It's a B Star, which is a little odd. You know, most of them are um, U blocks, which is a, a nice GPS. Um, being a 6M, it's a decent GPS, but it's nothing special. It is not nearly the newest technology. Um, you really want a 6H if you can get it. Now, another thing that's unique is this this mounts basically inside the frame. So it's going to be covered up by the top, but then the USB plugs right over it. So it actually kind of blocks a little bit of its signal. It's probably not going to be getting incredibly good GPS um, acquisition, but it's going to be decent. If you had a 6H in there, you would get better reception. Um, so I'm actually looking at potentially having an upgrade for this that's just going to be a plug and play 6H upgrade that goes up onto the, the tower. Now this tower looks like it was designed to hold a GPS unit with a compass in it, which is really what it should be, but it's not. Um, instead they went with the roughly five or six dollar GPS unit and a standalone magnetometer. Now this magnetometer is um, going to do its job being up and out of the way of all the other electronics, keeping the heading and orientation of the craft um, acclimated. The downside is when I pulled this off, it's stuck on with just this this double stick tape and uh, well I, I pushed it down real hard but it from the factory this was not this unit was not pushed down very well and it actually popped off right when I just took the plastic piece off and if that happened in flight and you were using GPS mode it's it's over you're not you're not getting it back it's gonna try to fly away it's gonna do something really weird it won't be able to rely on GPS signal because it won't know the direction it's facing if this unit is not perfectly flat and oriented in the same direction at all times. If that thing can float, you have no GPS accuracy at all. Um, so be really careful of that. You may want to even pop the top off if you get one of these and make sure this piece is pushed down and aimed the correct direction. Um, so that kind of takes the mystery out of the GPS and the magnetometer. Um, it would be an upgrade to get a GPS magnetometer combo and put it in this unit. I actually doubt some of them would fit in here. You might have to do some modification to this. But um, so far, pretty impressive. Uh, one major downside inside this box, there is an I2C port. So you can use something like a telemetry unit, which APM is really famous for. These telemetry units are fantastic for being able to update waypoints and uh, modify PIDs on the fly. Downside, that I2C port has no external extensions. So you have to actually crack the case open and solder the four points for the I2C connection. 
that's pretty annoying considering considering damn near every APM board made so far has at least one open I2C port. So yeah, okay, not not a huge deal, but at least it's there. At least it's it's there in the PCB design. So I'll um I'll probably do a video where I crack the case open and show you guys how to add telemetry to this thing. But um I will put this thing back together and give it a flight and see see where we're at. Maybe I can improve the tuning. Um, I'll also let you know what firmware it came with because firmware changes very often on APM. Um, and if you're not familiar with APM, this wouldn't be a bad way to start. Uh, it's probably a fairly forgiving platform and uh, parts should be read readily available. Downside to um, sort of this monocoque frame design, if you bust an arm off, you will have a lot of work ahead of you. Um, you can't just simply replace an arm like most designs. You have to really take everything out and then replace it with a shell, with a new shell. So that's that's some of the downsides. This bugs me. This bugs me. The no A2C error, uh, the no I2C bugs me. Uh, but other than that, seems like a pretty clean design, pretty efficient, definitely good for the price for a beginner. It's never going to be like a serious aerial camera platform, not in any way, not not like the stuff that my my personal designs are intended for. But um, for getting into the industry, this is. It's really fun. I'm sure. I'm sure it'll be a good flyer. Hopefully, there's no, uh, you know, no no issues in the build quality. So, I'll follow up on this later. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, sort of casual video with a little bit of information. All right. Thanks. Take care.